Hello everyone, my name is Garrett Francisco, and today we'll be looking at what I believe is a very interesting topic, sloths. There are plenty of fascinating topics in regards to sloths, from the way they evolved to even the way in which they mate. But for this presentation, I wanted to focus on a couple of aspects that make sloths, like the one you see on your screen right now, unique from almost any other animals. First though, let us understand what a sloth is. Sloths are a group of animals under the order Pelosa within the superorder Xenarthra. The word Xenarthra actually relates to their weird articulation, but that is not the trait we'll be focusing on today. There are two types of sloths extent, meaning still around, the two-toed sloths and the three-toed sloths. Right here is an example of a two-toed sloth hanging from a tree branch. Let's look at some general characteristics shared between both types. As you may have noticed from the previous pictures as well as this one, sloths have flattened faces and very round heads. They have claws at the end of their appendages, which you can see here are sort of rounded to easier grasp onto trees and their branches. You can find sloths in Central and South America, where there are tropical environments for them to hang around in, and they are relatively small, usually weighing less than 20 pounds. There are, however, some differences between the two-toed sloths and the three-toed sloths. For starters, they are not categorized in the same taxonomic family. If you look at the phylogeny of sloths, something of an ancestral family tree, if you will, the two groups are on opposite sides. This is especially ironic when you see the similarities between the two and take into context they both natively live in basically the same areas. The two-toed sloth does eat more variety than that of the three-toed sloth along with how far they travel or move, not to mention the names. You would think that they have different numbers of toes, but it is actually their forelimbs that differ. The baby two-toed sloth on the left has one of its hind legs wrapped around the tree with three claws there. But of course, when many of us think of a sloth, there's one feature that comes to mind, their speed or I suppose the lack thereof. The word sloth refers to laziness, apathy, and being slow. And at first glance, these animals fit that characteristic perfectly. Sloths are extremely slow relative to most other creatures, topping out at about six to eight feet per minute on the ground and 15 feet per minute in the trees. On top of that, they're mostly seen lounging about in the treetops, like the picture you see right here, smiling without a care in the world. But when we dive deeper, sloths are actually successful because of this speed and because of their slothfulness, as it were. Living in a rainforest, there are leaves aplenty and trees sprawl over a vast terrain. Leaves can be pretty to look at, but do you know what they are not? Nutritious. Sloths feed off of leaves, and in order to survive, they have to slow everything down, stretching out the usefulness of those leaves. So that the leaves can sustain them, sloths have a very slow metabolism and consequently move at an extremely slow speed. If a sloth were to move like a human, they would have to eat so much more food. That also means they need to sleep for longer periods of time and maintain a low key energy level to extend the nutrition of leaves. However, the slower metabolism does help them avoid going to the ground as much, only really needing to go once a week to defecate, like you see this sloth doing, because their systems take such a long time to process food. This means less contact with the ground where predators lie in wait and like to go hunting. Speaking of predators, a sloth's slowness can also help act as a stealthy hiding and in plain sight approach to survival. Along with green algae that gives a slightly green tint to their fur which acts like camouflage, 
the sloths are designed to blend in with their surroundings and are less likely to attract the attention of any nearby predators because of their slow speed. With things like pumas, jaguars, and harpy eagles lurking around every corner, it can be difficult to outrun death and the grim fate that awaits those who are caught. So instead of becoming faster, the sloths adapted to be slower and have been largely successful because of it. Here is just a little diagram with a monk sloth outlining what the sloths do in terms of why they are considered slothful like sleeping for hours, moving really slow, and lounging about amongst the trees. One last point I wanted to get to was their evolution and continued existence. As you can see from this little graphic here, there are only two extant genera left alive out of a total of 33. Scientists are still discovering fossils and are still attempting to piece together why there are only two left, but ultimately, the ones who remain are these small, slow guys who sloth it up in the trees. Ground sloths, who almost certainly would have needed to be faster than six or eight feet per minute, are no longer around, but the slow ones soldier on. To leave it off on a funnier note though, I wanted to talk about the sloth in my home. My dog, Bella, is also a is also lazy, sluggish, and lounges about all day. Sometimes though, it is not about the speed at which they move, but the efficiency with which they do it. And who knows, the sloth may yet still outlive us all. On that day, slow and steady will have actually won the race. Thank you for your time and have a great day.